What a great day. After four years of study, these students have finally made it. They're doctors of veterinary medicine. They're ready to go out into the world and do what? Well, what do you think of when you hear the word veterinarian? Absolutely. Taking care of pets is an important part of veterinary medicine. But there are other kinds of veterinary medical careers, too. Veterinary medicine, it's all this and more. Growing up, I always thought I wanted to be a veterinarian until I heard I had to give shots and then I thought I'd be an archeologist and then I decided giving shots wasn't so bad. My field of practice is large animal medicine my typical day starts out with a herd check in the morning on a, on a dairy farm, which usually consists of checking cows to see if they're pregnant or not, and just generally talking with producers about what's going on the farm, how the cows are doing, if they're healthy or if they're having any problems. She's pregnant, Eric. After that, we take emergency calls for people who have just one or two sick cows that they need to be looked at or we do any surgeries that we need to do in the afternoon. These animals are going into our food supply and we need to make sure that our food supply is safe for everybody to eat. And I also really enjoy the type of people I work with. The farmers are, are wonderful clients and you become very close friends with the people you work with and I really enjoyed that. So what exactly does veterinary medicine mean? The word veterinary comes from a Latin word meaning of cattle. But veterinary medicine today includes the study of all animal species, including humans. That's right. Veterinary medicine affects human health, too. Veterinarians protect the health of animals and people in a wide variety of ways by specializing in the care of particular species such as dogs and cats or birds or cows or a veterinarian can focus on an area of care such as dentistry or surgery. Veterinarians also work in areas in which animals affect society, such as the food supply. Other veterinarians are like detectives and conduct research. Some go into teaching. No matter what your interest, there's a place for you in veterinary medicine. Test your veterinary knowledge. What was the first animal domesticated by humans? You guessed it, the dog. That happened around 15,000 years ago. Between five and 8,000 years later, sheep, cows, cats, pigs, and horses joined the household. That must have been some crowded house. I grew up around horses in Puerto Rico in an area where there were no veterinarians around and it was basically that frustration that motivated me to become a veterinarian since, since I was little and provide care for the horses. On a typical day, uh, I can do anything from very simple uh, veterinary things like vaccinations and deworming horses, taking care of the horse's teeth. I'm a board certified surgeon. Uh, we as surgeons can do any type of surgery on a horse. What I enjoy the most about equine medicine is doing lameness exams because while I'm doing lameness exams, I'm trying to solve a puzzle. It's just like CSI on TV, we try to play detectives. I have a patient here who can't talk and she can't tell me where it hurts. So for me, it's a challenge to try to find out where it hurts. I have to do all kinds of diagnostic procedures like doing nerve blocks, flexing the limbs, 
trying to see where she hurts. Then I can find out what's the best treatment for her. When I was a kid growing in Puerto Rico, I honestly had a lot of people that would try to discourage me into going into this profession because it was, um, first I didn't know English back then, and it was too hard. You had to study too many years, and you'd have to go to the United States speaking English. But I wanted to be a veterinarian so badly, and none of those barriers would stop me from achieving my goals. Muggsy, come on back. More than ever, Americans share their lives with companion animals commonly known as pets. It's no wonder then that the largest proportion of veterinarians work in small animal practices. I practice small animal medicine, primarily dogs and cats. The reason I chose this field is the great variety. I can practice medicine, radiology, surgery, almost any field on my patients in my hospital, and it's a great field. Veterinary practices come in all shapes and sizes, from single doctor practices to multi-veterinarian hospitals. A veterinary practice is really a health care team. Dennis, how's the kennel? Everybody's okay back there? Perfect. Andrew, you've got two dentals to do today, right? Right. Other members of the team may include veterinary technicians, animal attendants, and receptionists. Riverwalk Animal Hospital. The best thing about being a veterinary technician, the thing that I love the most is to be able to help the animals, to see them come in very sick, and then, you know, a few days later they're going home and, and they're happy and the tail's wagging or they're meowing and it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It really helps uh, mend your heart. On a daily basis, a veterinary technician does whatever is asked of him or her. We tend to do a lot of restraint, holding animals and such. We do do IV catheters. Uh, we take blood from the animals and we often run the blood tests on the animals. We do help to prep for surgeries, clipping and, and scrubbing and such. Uh, we clean up after the animals, whatever needs to be cleaned up. If we have time, we like to play with the animals just to, to help have them be more comfortable in the hospital. If someone wanted to be a veterinary technician, I'd say uh, probably the most important thing is to have a love for animals. You definitely want to be strong in science in school, um, math secondarily. You definitely want to be able to work with other people because when you're working as a veterinary technician, you're working under a doctor, you're working with other technicians, you're working with front desk people, and we all work together to create a wonderful environment to help our patients get better and go home happy. Some small animal practitioners take their show on the road. This mobile vet makes house calls. It gave me the, the ability to um, really get out and see people and see my patients in their home environments. Um, you really can learn a lot, especially with behavior um, problems, for example, by seeing them in their own environment, seeing what they do at their own home. People become veterinarians for many reasons, but most choose the profession first and foremost because they love animals. My specialty as veterinarian has been to work with senior pets. I enjoy that part of veterinary medicine because that's where all the cool diseases are. Senior pets, of course, uh, constitute the large majority of, of some of the sicker pets, but enabling them to live a more productive, comfortable life really is rewarding as a veterinarian. I am board certified in internal medicine and in emergency critical care. Uh, both of them excite me. I love to solve problems. I love to take an animal that's not doing well and see them recover sometimes right before my very eyes. For me, the ability to come in every day and make animals feel better and work for their owners is very rich and rewarding. And in my own small way, it makes me feel like I make the world a slightly better place. What do you think? Do people have more dogs or cats as pets? Cats rule. According to the American Veterinary Medical Association, there are nearly 62 million pet dogs in the United States, but more than 70 million pet cats. CSI has nothing on veterinary pathologists. 
In the summer of 1989, people who lived in New York were falling prey to a virus. It caused encephalitis, a swelling of the brain. Some were dying. Mosquitoes were spreading the virus. But the nature of the virus was unknown. Crows were dying too. But health professionals who were working with the human cases did not believe that there was a connection. When dead crows started turning up on the grounds of the Bronx Zoo, the resident veterinary pathologist, Dr. Tracy McNamara, paid attention. It was her job to protect the zoo's wildlife. She dissected the dead birds and examined the tissue. What she discovered was encephalitis, the same disease that humans were catching. Then the zoo's birds began to die. Dr. McNamara's research convinced her that there must be a connection between the disease killing the birds and the one striking New Yorkers. She sent samples of the bird tissues to labs all over the country. Finally, scientists identified the culprit, West Nile virus. The same virus was affecting both birds and humans. Dr. McNamara's instincts and expertise paid off, but she had almost taken a different career path. I always wanted to be a vet ever since I was a kid, but was discouraged about going into veterinary medicine because uh, I wasn't very good at math. And it wasn't until I graduated from college and realized you can be as good as you want to be at anything if you put your heart into it. Um, I decided to go for it and stopped being a French major and went back to school and got into vet school. I chose to go into the area of uh, veterinary pathology because as someone who is interested in um, the well-being of captive and free-ranging wildlife, zoo animals and animals in Africa or anywhere else in the world, I, I felt that I could make the greatest contribution by investigating what it is that makes these animals sick. Um, you have to know what makes them sick or ill uh, if you want to keep them healthy, and that's basically what pathology is. It's the uh, recognition and understanding of disease, because when the crows were dying and the zoo birds were dying and when people were dying of encephalitis, it took someone with a comparative veterinary education and a comparative approach to be able to connect all the dots and to be the medical detective that put it together. In doing so, make it possible to provide the best medical care to the animals we're concerned about. Did you know that it was veterinarians who first proved that insects can transmit diseases to humans? That discovery launched historic efforts to control malaria, typhus, and yellow fever, to name just a few. I'm a swine consultant in private practice. Uh, my primary role is animal health. I'm from a rural community and wanted to come back to this area uh, to work in this community with, with the uh, farmers that I grew up with. Veterinarians who care for animals that are raised primarily for food have more than one mission. They protect the health of the animals, provide a good quality of life for them, and help ensure that you and I have a safe and plentiful food supply. Veterinarians who specialize in poultry are particularly important in a country that consumes huge amounts of chicken and turkey. They ensure the health of live flocks, as well as the safety of food sold to the public. The future of veterinary medicine, in my opinion, can be summed in three points. One, as long as there are companion animals, there will always be a need for veterinary medicine. Two, as long as there are infectious diseases on this earth, and the need for cures, there will always be a need for, for veterinary medicine. And last, as long as there are people on this earth and the need for human medicine, there will always be a need for veterinary medicine. Here's something I bet you didn't know. Animal diseases were first described in a book written by an Egyptian priest nearly 4,000 years ago, right around the time that Stonehenge was being built. So how do you become a veterinarian? Many colleges and universities have pre-veterinary studies where you can take the classes you need, like biology, chemistry, and math. In addition, you can often join a pre-vet club. These clubs are a good way to meet other students interested in veterinary medicine and can provide you with help when applying for veterinary school. Now, being admitted to veterinary school is competitive, but it is possible. Remember. 
We're looking for top-level applicants to make sure that we can get the highest quality people in our profession. So veterinary schools do look at your grades, but they're also looking at more than just grades. Experience working with animals and with veterinarians goes a long way. Leadership experience is also a big plus, as are communication skills. Certainly grades are very important, but what's equally important is to demonstrate a passion for the profession. What the admissions committee will look for are students who are interested not only in helping animals, but also in helping the people who depend on those animals for their livelihood, for their enjoyment, and for their companionship. My name is JC, I'm a senior student here. This must be Diamond. Leadership skills are important too, so don't shy away from running for office or taking other leadership responsibilities in your extracurricular activities in high school and college. The admissions committee will look carefully at your application for this type of experience. You may have heard rumors that veterinary school is too expensive or too hard. Veterinary school is no more expensive than medical school or other graduate schools. And there are many opportunities for financial aid. As for the hard part, well, if it wasn't challenging, you wouldn't be called doctor when you graduate. Plus, the rewards of veterinary medicine make it all worthwhile. I always thought that medical students had it pretty easy and that they had to study one species, that being humans. In vet school we had to study dogs, cats, horses, birds, cows, the list goes on. So there was an awful lot of information to absorb and retain. Do you like puzzles? Do you like finding out how and why things work? Veterinary medicine allows you to solve puzzles every day. The first phase of veterinary school is spent learning how animals and medicine work, and how and why veterinarians treat animal diseases. Muscle bellies will then start to converge with the tendon. The tendon will pick up out here and then go right over the top of the calcaneus and insert right here. These are the critical pieces of the puzzle that help everything else fall into place. After you've learned the basics, it's time for some hands-on learning. It's what students have been waiting for. More contact with live animals. It's a thrill to do your first veterinary exam on a patient. So she's going to go to surgery at about 1 o'clock. Um, we need the radiographs down in the pre op room. Uh, we'll get a catheter at around 10. Students receive instruction and support from veterinarians who have chosen to teach. So you got a good view of the right kidney there. So what you want to do now is turn that into a transverse section. Okay. Turn 90 degrees. Until it's time for students to be on their own, or almost on their own. You're never truly alone, though, because your fellow veterinarians are always going to help, even after you graduate. Probably the most rewarding part of being a veterinary student is that day, four years after you started, when you walk out onto the graduation stage, they call you by name, call you doctor, shake your hand, and send you out into the real world to do what you've always wanted to do. Where did it all start? The first school of veterinary medicine was established in Lyon, France in 1762. Imagine taking any of these animals on a visit to the veterinarian. Fortunately, at places like the Monterey Bay Aquarium, staff veterinarians are on hand. They study and care for the marine life at the aquarium. My area of special interest is in avian, exotic, and aquatic animals. Among his other duties, Dr. Murray is part of a program at the aquarium to rescue and rehabilitate stranded sea otters. I look at veterinary medicine as a very important aspect of conservation. Veterinarians have a unique role in society, and we can act as spokesmen not only for the individual animals, but for larger populations of animals and the ecosystems in which they survive. And we can educate the public on what's going on in the real world. Dr. Murray's group returns to the wild the rehabilitated otters that have the greatest chance of producing offspring, thus helping the endangered population recover. Did you know that according to consumer surveys, veterinarians consistently rank among the most respected professionals in our country? Usually because people think of all the great things that a veterinarian does for their pet. Boy, imagine how much respect veterinarians would get if people knew all the things they really do. For instance, do you know what veterinarians have to do with human health? A lot. 
and that link is more important than you might think. The well-being of animals matters to the health of people. It's easy to see how important pets are to the people who care about them. Animals can contribute to the health of older people and those recovering from illness. They provide independence to those who need a helping paw and can act as a great motivator to even the most reluctant reader. Animals help keep us safe, too. Police dogs protect their partners and help catch the bad guys. Other dogs are trained to detect the smell of bomb materials or drugs. But the interdependence between humans and animals can sometimes be a cause for concern as well. With emerging infectious diseases and the fact that so many of these emerging viruses are zoonotic, meaning they affect animals and people, veterinarians are going to play a critical role in the recognition, diagnosis, and understanding of some of these novel disease threats. Rabies, West Nile virus, and avian flu are examples of zoonotic diseases which are diseases that are spread through contact with infected animals or insects. Zoonotic diseases are a particular concern in regard to our national security. 70% of known bioterror threats, such as anthrax and Ebola, which can be deadly, are zoonotic diseases. These zoonotic diseases are extremely important for animal populations and for you and I. I serve as a state veterinarian, and there is one of us in each of our 50 states. And we work with a list of these diseases that are extremely important. So when they become identified, we can respond rapidly to make sure we not only have healthy animals, but you and I stay healthy as well. We work closely with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and the Food and Drug Administration to make sure these diseases are rapidly identified and quickly removed from our populations so you and I stay healthy. People and animals may share diseases, but they can also share the cures. We bridge the gap between humans and animals. I mean, we have a better background in animals that medical doctors wouldn't necessarily have. When Triumph the dog needed new back legs, Dr. Robert Taylor, you may know him from Animal Planet, gave her permanent artificial legs. Triumph's case is being studied by human doctors and will be used to help people who have lost their legs. Veterinarians have been pioneers in many areas of treatment and research that have been translated to human health. Examples include hip replacement surgery and the use of metal plates, pins, and wires to repair broken bones. Which of these was improved and made more useful by a veterinarian? A. A hypodermic syringe or B. The first practical inflatable tire. The answer is both. Military veterinarians? Are there animals in the military? You bet there are. They're some of our finest soldiers, and military veterinarians take care of them, and do much more besides. We are now actively involved in homeland defense and in discovering and protecting the population against emerging diseases. Whether it's in uh, Baghdad, Iraq, or whether it's in the former Soviet Union, or whether it's in Frederick, Maryland, they have had the opportunity to really do some things that have made a difference for the security of our country. Did you know that it was a veterinarian who discovered the Ebola virus? And another veterinarian who discovered how to screen for HIV in blood samples? Small animal practice? Swine, equine, dairy, aquatic animals, surgery, pathology, academia, the military. Can there be anything else veterinarians do? As a matter of fact, yes. In the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, these members of the Veterinary Medical Assistance Team were treating individual animals and addressing the public health issues that arise following disasters. Everything from mosquitoes carrying disease to displaced wildlife. Veterinarians are also intimately involved in the making of laws and regulations that cover everything from restaurant inspections to the movement of food animals that cross our borders every day. From protecting your town against rabies to providing for the humane treatment of animals, veterinarians work at every level of government. You can see them in the U.S. Senate, the governor's office, at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 
and in the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Right down to your own local government, veterinarians are there to serve the needs of our society. There have even been veterinarians in space. A veterinarian won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1996. A veterinarian has appeared on the cover of Time magazine. And a veterinarian has been Miss America. Some veterinarians choose to apply their scientific training to research at universities, government agencies, or in industry. They're dedicated to finding new ways to prevent and treat injuries and disease in animals and humans. And every time you visit a zoo, a circus, or a wildlife refuge, remember that there are veterinarians working behind the scenes to keep those exotic animals healthy too. Even the most unusual animal has medical needs just like the rest of us. What should you do if you're considering a career in veterinary medicine? Those in the know offer a little advice. I can't think of a more exciting field than veterinary medicine. If that is your dream, follow it. Contact a veterinarian or others involved with this profession and find out how you can become involved. If your interest is research or public health or biomedicine, veterinary medicine is a part of those fields too. So please consider veterinary medicine. We'd love to have you as part of our team. My advice would be to really pursue that dream even when things get tough. Stay focused in undergraduate. Broaden your horizons and, and have fun as you go along. Realize that it's not out of your league. Um, it's not about grades. It's, I think it's more about how badly you want something. If I did it, you can do it. The possibilities in veterinary medicine are almost endless. The more we understand about life on this planet, the more we appreciate the connection between all animals, the two-legged, the four-legged, many-legged and no-legged varieties. Veterinary medicine works to keep us all safe, strong, and healthy. Veterinary medicine, it's more than you thought, but now you know.